The translation of policies into implementable programs or projects on the ground is one of the ways of assessing effective policy. The first episode of Trash Talk spoke about policy, legal, regulatory, and institutional issues on plastics and plastic waste management. On this second episode, we seek to assess what is happening on the ground yet again. This is where our communities feel the impact of the strategies and all other soft components of national efforts on plastics and plastic waste. Today, we speak to some amazing entrepreneurs across the plastics value chain who have over the years spent time and resources to change the negative narrative of plastic waste. We are going to speak to them, but before we do that, we'll go for a commercial break. And right after that, we'll meet these entrepreneurs. You're welcome to Trash Talk. Today we are going to talk about some amazing innovations of plastic waste. And I have with me a panel of all men who are entrepreneurs, who are innovators, who are doing amazing things. I want to start my introductions with Julius Jason. He's from University of Ghana. Hello, you are welcome, Julius. Hi, thank I you. Want to talk about, I want to introduce Christopher. And I want to talk to somebody from UPPR. And that is Mr. Quinn. Then there's Nelson. Nelson, they'll all get the opportunity to introduce their companies and their innovations. Then last but not the least is Abubakar Isaka. You're all welcome to Trash Talk. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. We have been looking forward to seeing you on a program like this. Mm -hmm. What you do is amazing. I want to start off by asking, first of all, do you think that plastics, as we see as waste is truly waste. Do you consider plastics as waste at all? I would want to start with you. Yeah, if you look at what I do, I would say plastic is more or less like a material in transition. So it's something we recover from the community and repurpose them. For the University of Ghana Plastic Recycling Project, which is housed under the Institute for Environment and Sanitation Studies, our motto is let's give our plastic waste a second life. So definitely it is no waste. Wonderful. We move next to Mr. Shy Guy here. <laughs> Tell us what you do, what you've been able to do with plastics. Okay, and so, uh, if you consider it as not a waste at all. Okay, thank you. So um, I'm with Cesar Recycling Limited. So um, we are into recovery of plastic materials, both the PET, HDP, the LDP. Um, so we collect them from the communities. Then we process them into flakes and resell them to the, both the local and international markets for people to also process these materials for us to give them a second life, as um, my colleague also said, uh, my senior said, that we need to give second lives to these materials. And it has so many opportunities. That is why we are all into it. And we are make, trying to make sure that we save the planet. I'm mm -hmm. going to come back to you to talk about profitability issues. Mm -hmm. I, want to, I want to move to UPPR. What is UPPR all about? What have you done that you're noted for using the plastic waste? All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, UPPR, um, Universal Plastic Products and Recycling Limited, that's what uh, our name stands for. As you clearly hear in the name, we, we are into manufacturing of plastic, and we are also into recycling. So I'm recycling whatever um, my colleagues here collect, and I'm using to produce uh, products that we, we continue to use in our homes and various So you places. are not into the production of virgin plastics? But recycled, you are making an effort at recycling. We are using the recycled material to produce uh, products of value. Wonderful. What are some of the products that you have? The waste beans uh, that we see um, on the market are uh, produced uh, mainly from uh, plastic waste uh, collected. And also the trash bags, okay. uh, which are the flexibles uh, from sashi bags and other things that are collected uh, from the environment. Yes, converted back into reusable items, basically. That's Exciting it. stuff happening there. It Nelson, is, we move to you. What is it that you've done? I, I see that right before you, you are demonstrating something. What is yeah. this at all? Could you tell us what it is and what you've been up to in this space of plastic, utilizing plastics? 
Okay, so um, now plants, for us, we see plastic to be a, a valuable resource if properly managed. We use all kinds of plastic waste with the exception of PVC pipes. Mm. Then we mix them with sand and produce bricks okay. for affordable housing, also paving, walkways, car parks. Wow. This, how, how long did it take you to go into this? How long have you been into this? This, I, I don't know whether to call it a business or innovative space. How long have you been in this space? Okay, so when it comes to plastic industry, I've, I've been in it at the age of 13, which is sadly bad, but I have to do that <laughs> to, to take care of myself and also help my parents take care of my siblings. Mm -hmm. at, at, at the age of eight, 13, I was already working with one plastic industry, which I don't want to mention the name because they might have problems because they are still in operation. Yeah. So through that, I got the idea of how to work with plastics, how to build machines and all those stuff. So it's been how many years? 13 now, it will be about 25 years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So the issue of plastics and recycling and reuse has been on the map for that long. I want to come to, I want to, come to our friend here. Yes. My name Abu is Bakar. Yes. Yeah. I'm from Bola Plant Center for Upcycling. Yes. Yeah, actually, I, <clears throat> I see uh, the plastic as a useful waste material. Okay. Yeah, from my side. Because uh, after whoever has finished using it this way, mm -hmm. instead of throwing it at that moment, it's a waste for that person. And that is where it becomes a useful material for me. All right. Yeah, so I reuse it as it is with some other materials to make a bin. Yeah. For that same person to drop it in that bin instead of dropping it on the floor. Yes, so that is where I see uh, the material as a... How long have you been in the, the system? Five years now. Wonderful. How many people do you employ, if you don't mind sharing? Mm, actually, I mean, both direct and indirect <clears throat> employment, I would want Actually, to know. in terms of employment, I've not employed people like this, but I'm working with... Uh, six people as that now. All right. Yes. So indirect employment. In, yes. Yes. Six of them. I have three women and then child labor. <laughs> <laughs> Is it because of the nature of the job? Yes. Yes. It's because of the nature of the job. Because uh, actually, uh, some of we, the young men, don't see the reason why we should come and then work around the waist. Yes. So they don't usually come, but I'm using my junior ones, my brothers, and then my nephews and cousins as the younger ones. Yeah, so they sometimes do the collection together with the aged, the old women who go around picking the sashes. They also, some of them work with me, so these are the kind of people I'm working wow. with as now. Christopher, tell us why you went into this space. So, what lured you into this space? A young man like you. <laughs> tell us what, what motivated you into, to go into this space. Um, thank you. So it's all about passion yeah, and okay. where you find yourself uh, at a particular point in time in life. So um, I come from a background where we have people in economics and other stuff. So um, as part of community activities, with, I derived my passion from volunteerism. Okay. So out of volunteerism was when I, I got into the love for plastics. So I turned into recovery of plastics um, from our seniors like uh, Noplas. So was in tertiary, we were looking at some marvelous things they were doing. We could hear of them, but then we weren't able to meet them. But through um, the recovery process, we were able to meet them to also motivate us to also help clean the environment because they are all problems, but then problems with solutions to help save the environment. Wonderful. Julius, did yes. you study anything in the space of waste management, plastics? Are you into engineering? What are, what's your background? Are you still I, at the University of Ghana or you're a graduate? Yes, I, I am a staff of the University yeah, of Ghana now. Okay. I, I will tell you, but maybe I should share this with everybody here. Okay. I had a dream of becoming a doctor when I was very low. Okay. And when I proceeded to the secondary school, I did not actually get into the science class because I did not meet a cutoff and I did not score a one in the BEC for science. Okay. So the headmaster came to drive me from the class it took me to the business class where I actually belonged. So from there, I got to the university. I wanted to be an economics. Mm -hmm. I applied for economics. Also, I did not score an excellent grade in my core mathematics. 
So I was not allowed to read economics, but I got psychology. Okay. So with psychology, I joined an NGO called Recycle Up Ghana, and I got exposed to the recycling problems. And then it sparked an interest in environmental psychology, which is the interaction between people and the environment and vice versa. So I decided to think through this, see how I can channel my knowledge from recycling into changing people's behavior, which is why I engineer a lot of projects in line with changing people's waste disposal behavior. So that is basically the reason I'm working with the Institute for Environment and Sanitation Studies, but I did not read anything relating to what I do now. It's just because I joined NGOs, studied, took courses, and then now I'm like, I won't say an expert, but quite good at what I do. Yeah. That's very inspirational. I would want to know from the two gentlemen, the typical day at UPPR, could you tell us where you get collectors who come to, I do not know the value chain. Could you tell us the typical day at UPPR? Um, typical day at UPPR, let's say my day starts mostly with, with uh, morning meetings, just mm -hmm. a plan for the day. Mm -hmm. And they know what is coming in in terms of material. So we um, receive on a daily basis uh, material from, from collectors, uh, from other sources like dump sites and all mm -hmm. that, various places. So, I get whatever uh, is needed for my daily production, probably um, what colors I need yes, uh, today is not available today, so probably if, if it comes in today, yes, then I use it. So then there's whole production plan, I mean production, so uh, whatever materials are available are produced in different colors, in different forms, and the same um, also for the flexible side. You know, Do you accept producing. all types of, of plastics at UPPR? Yeah, we accept all types of plastic at UPPR. Uh, we say all types of plastic because most of the plastic in the system are usable, unless some few which are not uh, really processable, like the polystyrene, carbonate, and those other materials which are difficult to, to reprocess. But basically, the, the ones we find on the, in our homes on a daily um, basis, like the bowls, basins, buckets, baskets, broken beans, you know, all those ones are easily processed into um, similar products or any other products which is again used in our homes and the household, yes. Basically, How yes. many people does UPPR employ, if you don't mind? In the factory right now, we have about 90 people, 90 then, people. but we have um, others who are doing collection, those who are doing segregation at various um, different areas, and those who also collect and bring to us for further processing and recycling, yes. Wow. It's, it's, it's amazing, all the stories you are telling me. Nelson. I, I think I chanced on something about your work, the, the, the brick, I don't know, is it brick? It's brick. You call it brick, right? Plastic brick. Yes, so I, I chanced on um, a video some time back, and I think one of the challenges that had been cited was people's willingness to patronize, because it's quite new on the block. Could you tell us, first of all, your typical day, the people you work with, and who you sell to? All right. So Neoplas has 53 workers employed directly and over 300 indirect workers. Wow. And 98% of them are women. They go around to pick the plastic waste and sell to us at the end of the day. We use all kinds of plastic waste with the exception of PVC pipes. Okay. Uh, especially the, this type of plastic, the laminate from Nestle Ghana, which is very difficult to recycle. We also use them in the production of the bricks. So um, we have these plastics sorted out into types. Then we mix them according to percentage with the sun. Then it, it goes through the extruder that we build ourselves to produce the bricks. Now, we have a lot of demands for the product. But the issue here is how to deliver. Hold on. Hold that thought. When you say that you built the structure or the machine yourself. Do you have an engineering background of some sort? Like I mentioned earlier, at the age of 13, I was already working in the plastic industry, and my Chinese masters taught me a lot of things, okay. how to build a studio mm -hmm. and, and other stuff. So the machine we are using right now, I build them myself. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, taking you back to the point where you left off, you said the challenge is demand, or rather supply? The supply, okay, so our waste collectors, they have the capacity of supplying 
over 20,000 kilos of plastic waste on a daily basis. Wow. But we as a company can only do 3,000 because of capacity issues. Now, the demand for the product is higher, especially the affordable housing that we are building now. Okay. It's higher than what we can deliver. Okay. So that has been the challenge now with Neoplast. But with the plastic supply, we have enough. And sometimes we even have to stop them from bringing it for months because I don't have enough space to keep them. And they, you must pay them at a go when they deliver. Mm -hmm. You can't tell them, go and come back next week for money. You know, they've suffered walking <laughs> through the sun. And you tell them those stories, they won't accept Nobody it. Nobody will accept it. Yeah. These women also are household heads who have yes. to feed their children. Yes. I mean, I would want us to move the discussion to financing. These are all innovative ideas you've translated into, you know, tangibles. How, Chris, tell us about how you financed your ideas. Okay, so um, from our startup, uh, in terms of the piloting, we were fortunate to get um, funding from Dow Chemical. From Dow Chemical, Chemical. Yeah, all That's right. where we actually had our seed um, funding okay. with our pilots. So how did you hear about Dow Chemical's... <laughs> Grant opportunity. I suppose a grant. Yes. How did you hear about it? Do they advertise these grant opportunities? How did you hear about it? Yes, they do advertise these grant opportunities. It's about you also knowing what you want and where you, you need to go to. Mm -hmm. So if you want something, you need to explore. If you're not exploring and you're very static, meaning that you're not going to move. Mm -hmm. So from there, we're able to start with the piloting and unfortunately uh, COVID also got in but then hopefully we were very positive with what we wanted to do so out of COVID we were able to get um, the UNDP um, challenge we won we were part of those who won the challenge so far wow there, we have to applaud Christopher I mean you're doing amazing stuff attracting all these you know funding yes. and these are from credible institutions you must be doing something right yes please because we <laughs> are touching base with um, um, the waste pickers themselves and um, households themselves and it's about the impact you are creating for people to also understand the value of the plastics. Mm. So out of that, um, for you to be sustainable, you can only always be a business. Some yeah. are, we are a business, so we want to progress. So out of, we, we, as we flake these bottles, but we didn't just start flaking. We always started from the collection. Mm. Before now, we are able to flake. So I always keep saying that you can't start something right from collection and flaking. No, mm -hmm. you have to understand the problem from the from the ground because if you start collecting and you're flaking and you fall short of material mm -hmm. you have to fold your hands and wait for someone wait for to bring you the material yeah so then you have to you know you need to know where you are going to so if i know i'm going to poly um 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 my colleague over Bola here plus. yes or Bola Jules, plus. Bola plus, i yeah. know i'm going to them for material but then if you if you are not involved in the process in terms of the value chain right from the collection meaning that you're not going to be sustainable. You need to know where the materials are coming from to promote your activity that you're running. Abu Bakr, tell us yes, something about Bola Plast. I mean, how did you start? Who gave you the support? <laughs> All of these things couldn't just be <laughs> things from your mind. Yes, Even yes, when you yes, have them on my, in your mind, they need to translate. And translation is all about money. How did, this, how did you get funded? Myself, actually, I didn't start this. This wasn't part of my passion at all. I okay. never thought I would one day come and then be working around the plastics. No. Mm -hmm. I used to be a footballer. And you know footballers, we love to train. Mm -hmm. So I was at Accra Beach when I helped a fisherman to pull out net. And then we caught plastics instead of fish. Wow. Yes. And at that time, they give you fish after each and every... Support you. Yes. Given. So he said he has no fish to give me. I said, no problem. But he asked me, where do I come from? I said, well, I'm from Amubi. And that is when he said, do you know that most of this waste are coming from your side? So wow. I felt it. I felt that, yes, I should do something to help such people. So after my football days were over, <laughs> I, I, started, I said, no, let me start something to help this fisherman in my very own small way. It was then that I developed the idea of educating people not to throw, not to litter. And some of the questions they were asking me, like, if I don't throw it, where do you want me to put it? Yeah. So wow. I dare one guy and I said, wow. I'll provide. I said, I'll provide. He said, okay, then he's waiting. Yeah. So I brought the 24-liter bin mm -hmm. 
or I don't know, is it 240? Yeah. And then the junkies stole it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of challenges. No good that you are laughing yeah. about them now. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny. I brought two mm -hmm. one for plastics and then one for other waste. Mm. In less than two weeks, they got stolen. Mm. Both of them. So I, I, a friend of mine sent me a picture of a, a bin made of plastic. And then I tried it and see. So it was then that I started uh, doing this thing. But I go through a lot of challenges because I am the one finding myself. Yes, my passion is to be with animals. I do goat rearing. Mm -hmm. So whenever this thing eats me up, I just catch two or three goats, sell it, buy iron rods, pay the welders, and then mm -hmm. give them my structure. And boom, there's a bean. I will come to the challenges of each of you. It's, it, 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 it can't be easy. I'm not sure, I can't imagine the ease. These, these are very new areas that not everybody ventures into. You must be very courageous yeah. men around the table. And I, I, I mean, I'm not going to be deceived by your gray, <laughs> but I'm going to say young men around the table. And I think that you are doing a wonderful job. I would want you to tell me some of the challenges you face with plastics. Well, even the, though you are passionately in the space, yeah. what are some of the challenges? I think the primary problem we saw is with people's attitude. Basically, people's attitude. yes, when everyone is talking, they are like the collectors will bring the waste. But from where I come from, which is the Institute for Environment and Sanitation Studies, mm -hmm. our goal is to set up a system where you don't have to go around collecting people's waste from mm -hmm. the dump sites. So we want to create a system where right from the consumer, from the household, you go and then there is segregated waste. And University of Ghana, you know the credibility we have there. We produce, let's say, 80% of the nation's leaders. So if we are able to change those who are in school, if you are able to instill a culture of source segregation and recycling into these students, when they become the national leaders, then we know we are going to get somewhere. I, I as want far you as to hold that thought. Yeah. Because I want to take you back to the same segregation issue. Yes. Where should we start from? When you say segregation, what do you mean, first of all? We have to know that waste is only waste when you put them together. I can put on record that we have people stealing our plastic wastes from our dustbins <laughs> on the University of Ghana campus. Wow. So once you segregate them, it becomes a resource, which yes. was like your first question. Mm -hmm. Once you're able to separate the fractions of waste, it becomes a very valuable resource. So we need to start from the homes. Civilization starts from the home, we say. The homes, the religious bodies, we are having recycling programs with churches, as, I, as we speak. What we do have, you tell them? What, are some, what is the message you carry at, it's in at a the book of, it's, a, it's in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 15. God created the earth and said, I have put you man in charge of it. This, what it basically means is you're supposed to take good care of it. If so you, segregation, what are you telling them? Because, you see, around the table, because we are in this ecosystem, mm -hmm. we sort of understand yeah. segregation. For the people watching us, what does segregation mean? When you use any waste in your household for whatever product that you don't need, you're supposed to classify them. Okay, these are plastics. I put them here. These are organics, food, the one that can rot. Mm. You put them, there's a use for them. These are toxic or let's say hazardous waste. You put them. So segregation is just you having different dustbins or different containers. So I put a different fractions of waste in them. Once you do this, it is no more waste because... Growing up, we had people coming to take our sports flip flops and they give us football in return. Okay. I was living in a village in the Brown for region. This was happening. This is about over 20 years ago. So, once you're able to separate them into different fractions, it's usable. When you go to Arikop and the ACAP and everything, they will tell you one of the biggest challenges the infrastructure involved, the cost involved in the separation of the mm -hmm. waste. Yeah. So if we are able to separate at a household level, we can actually put more value on these resources and then create a lot of jobs. We are a country of unemployment. So I think we... I'm going we, to come to, to look, opportunities. Yeah, we need to look at I that want to, as well. I want to come to um, um, UPPR, <laughs> Mr. Kui. Now, how does one get up and just say, I want to come and supply plastics to UPPR. If I am a household head, can I just walk up to you and say that we collect this much plastics, say, every week, and negotiate with you? Or, I mean, how do you get your collectors? Before I even come to that, um, yeah. 
Abu uh, said mm -hmm. uh, he bought two beans, right? Yes. Different uh, colors to collect different type yeah. of waste. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Julius also saying the same thing about mm -hmm. segregation. You know, segregation, that's where it starts from, our homes, our schools. That, that brings it nicely to me mm -hmm. to say that I can sell different colors of waste beans because I produce different colors of waste beans, mm -hmm. different sizes, and of course, different bean liners. So plastic, it's what? Yellow, um, whatever color it is has a, a particular waste that goes in. So that brings it nicely to me for good business. So continue segregating. <laughs> I'm sure we'll have it. You know, we're having some, yeah. some business. This no. is a good platform for you to be selling. Yeah. We haven't yeah. take a commission on this. Ooh, I mean, I'll, I'll see you back. You have to. Now, what are, like, I want to, so how do we approach? Do you advertise for people to come to your end with plastics? What do you do? How do people hear about you know, the, the need for plastics at UPPR? We also try to do a lot of um, um, education through partnership with those who are already out there doing stuff, especially with the schools, with yeah. institutions, okay. where we encourage a lot of uh, segregation, a lot of collection, recovery. Um, then we also try to take them through the process where they see the, the end results of whatever is collected. It's exciting to see a finished product from from a, a waste material, let's mm -hmm. say, that somebody dumps and somebody collects it and brings yeah. it to us. It's exciting to, to see. So we, we use that uh, channel, that way to encourage a lot more people, to show them, to, bring, to encourage them to collect more because they see what it ends up. And yes, anybody or everybody can walk into our place and then sell whatever forms Where of plastic. Where are you located? Uh, we are uh, Baltimore. Um, okay. That's 18 junction uh, of the motorway near right. the University Farm Road. And they can work in any time. We can also pick up. We have some places that we, we pick some waste material from. And of yes, a lot more places also on the dump sites and other disposable, uh, disposed dump sites areas across the country. I think a time like this in our nation's um, development where we need a lot of um, employment opportunities, I would want to find out from you how people, how easy it is to enter this kind of space. For people who are not already with you, who, somebody who's watching this, a young person who wants something to occupy them, where do they start from? I'll start from you. This, this, whatever I think about this situation, it saddens me a lot because when you look at the Ghana's, Ghana's plastic waste ecosystem, it is not exactly lucrative, so to speak. Because it's not lucrative. Yes, you look at an old woman, very old, you walk along the streets of Accra for like two, three, four hours you get huge bags of plastic bottles with you. You go to Nelson to sell, and what you are worth is like seven cities, eight cities, because there's not much value on these plastics what over here. What is the size? If maybe UPPR can yeah. give us the, the, the quantum that you take and for how much you give to give yeah. us an idea. The, the prices actually uh, differ from, okay. from place to place. So <laughs> what is it is actually true. You okay. know, let's even... Take, for example, this bottle. Yeah. You know, you need about 250 or something pieces to make up a kilo. Because this bottle oh. weighs, what, um, 15, 16 grams? Yes. You know, so you collect about 250 pieces of this bottle to just get one kg. One. And you know how much I'll pay you if you do that? I, I want to know. <laughs> some I want to know, some I don't want to know. But I want to know because people who are watching this would want to be educated. Yeah. So let's say 25, 250 pieces of this. Yeah. One kilo. Would how, be, how much do you so buy? So about one kilo. Let's just say 500 pieces of this would give me about how much? After all my effort, <laughs> walking in the sun, carrying it on my back <laughs> and all of that. How much would this give me? Do you want to be encouraged or discouraged? I want to be <laughs> No, we are talking about the realities because <laughs> we are talking about the realities because then we because I mean you're on a program like this, the easy assumption would be that you've had it easy. Yeah. But we want people to understand the practicalities and the challenges of such um, ventures that you've been into. So back to the question about twenty five sorry, two fifty pieces of this would give me about how much? Eh, I'll pay about between one city and one city, 30 pesos. Yeah. That's like over 200. Yeah. So you get me? You, yes. You Maybe basically don't... pay more. Do you pay more? Do you pay no, more? No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> Nobody pays yes. more. So, even the, no. what the figure is giving is, it means that you are transporting it to his facility. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's yes. inclusive of transportation. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, so <laughs> that is the main reason why you find more PET 
on the street than pure yeah. tasashi. Because yeah. it's not rewarding to yes. get them. Yes. Has, do you know if government has done anything about it to make it a little more attractive for mm. people to pick? For no, now, for now, for we, now no. We, we don't yeah. Because it. most of the PT is not being used locally here. Yeah. yeah. So the value. Of but it, you are into export, aren't you? Yes. But so, then, so still, these aren't attractive to you. We are hoping and hoping. Let <laughs> you know, me. One of the challenge. Okay. One of the challenge these collectors are having is, you know, after the consumer, mm -hmm. yeah. they don't crash. Yeah. They, 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 they don't somewhere. press it. Yes. So putting this in a plastic no. bag. Occupy By the space. 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 You are very light. Okay. But if we, we, we if, if 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 we we can take it upon ourselves to teach people mm -hmm. on how to crash it and just close the, uh, the then with a small bag they can get it the way that they want. But are you are you entrepreneurs interested in this part? Yes, of yes, the yes much more valuable. Yeah. 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 Much more valuable than this. Yes. 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 Okay. So this is the part you are more interested in to support your different yes. ventures. But I am interested in. The entire bottle. Yes, the entire bottle. For instance, okay. Yes, yeah. and I'm not uh, in support of the crashing to not all the bottles because yes. I want them to Interesting. Be, yes, I want <laughs> yeah. it to be as clean yeah. as this. Wonderful. Yeah, so that my, my bean will look beautiful. Yes. Oh. Yes. So, so when I it's can, crashed, it distorts the beauty yeah, of your product. Yes, yes, yes. I can crash it when I'm taking it to Nail Plus. Okay. I yeah. can crash it when I'm taking it to Sisa. Okay. Yes. But when you are bringing it to me, you don't need to crash it. So then how many of these? I have carried like a thousand for four CDs. Yeah. Or, or, no, it's how many? It, it could be Are you paying more? No. No, 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 no. <laughs> You are paying less. I'm not paying less. Is it because the exporters, the foreign market is giving you more? It's not about the foreign markets. We, we are all aware of the cost of fuel now. Yes. Transporting yes. Yeah. you moving from from In fact Amania. the cost of production. Yes, everything is, production, going yes. everything is going even, high. Even even the people or the people you've yes. employed at the yes. facility to, even and all. to sort the bottles according to even colors that you are looking at. Yeah, it's another issue. I think in 2022 I've not made the bean yet. Okay. Yes. 2022. In 2022, no, 2022 bean. no bean. Why is that? And it's we are almost in the seventh yeah. month. Yes, because mm. it's expensive as we speak. Yeah. What are you then going to diversify into? Uh, I rod, hope you don't the, change. The rod I was buying for was it <laughs> six CD is yeah. now. Uh, 18 CD from no 6 CDs to yes. 18 CDs. Yes. So how much, they going to sell how much were you yes. selling your bin for? 150. <gasps> wow, and that's no, I need to pay a well there as well. Labor, I have those who punch holes through mm. the plastic for me. Oh. So, then <laughs> after all is said and done, I know we've spoken about the negatives a little bit. I want you to tell me in a more refreshing way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that one CD. The one CD you don't want. No. I want you to tell me in a more refreshing way. Despite these challenges, then still, what motivates you? I think whenever you see somebody doing what we are doing, working in the plastic value chain, the main component of the persons doing that is that passion. But this, I have, I have to be honest about yeah. it. Passion. You do not really make a lot of money working in the plastic value chain in Ghana. Uh, elsewhere, it's probably very good, but over here, it's the passion. So when you wake up and you're like, "No, today I don't want to go," and like, no "Ghana way. needs me," then yeah, you just you no just way. make the move. It's passion. It's passion. <laughs> for us, for us, what really moves us is, you know, when the these old ladies come with their plastics, waiting for their money. Okay, <laughs> they will be talking like mm -hmm. you, 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 you can, can, hear them. can overhear some ah. of the conversations. Yes, <laughs> uh, today I can cook this food. Today, my, my child can go to school. When you hear those staffs, you can't stop. Even you have though, to keep going. Yeah, even though the road is tough, but you still have to go because you've heard somebody saying... <laughs> Their life depends on, on you. you. Exactly. How can you stop? You can't stop. You have to keep going. Okay, I'm in, going to take the conversation okay. in a moment. I want to take the conversation to the angle of how have you received support from government? Okay, for, for my angle, you know, we are... A university mm -hmm. so we i would say it's one good step where we try to change behaviors of the younger generation the future leaders so to speak and the university has been able to put in place funding for this and we are actually expanding to the neighborhood communities so that we get this also in a community so i say that's one step we you know we have a national plastic policy which says that there should be plastic waste education in all levels of education so if the university of ghana is doing this and is working 
let's assume all the investors in the country pick up this. That's a huge amount of people because in, on UG campus we have over 60,000. So if all the other universities would do this, then we have taken care of a good percentage of the population who are also going to go home with a ripple effect of attitudinal change to their various families. So yeah, that's one angle we can look at. Chris, what about you? Same question. For now, no support from government. Um, we are just hoping that um, the plastic action can be enforced and the waste separation can also um, be enrolled into various communities, even if it's going to be a pilot that we can see that it's being um, in, enacted or being used or people are trying to segregate actually from the households. Mm -hmm. It's really going to help us because it also takes some of the burden off in terms of um, separation because then you are going to avoid some materials that you don't actually want in your facility because we are trying to recycle. We don't want to take all your whole trash to the facility. Have you had any support from government? No. What about development <laughs> partners? No. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you're good. My answer is, it's just me and my God. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yes, it's true. It's true. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been to so many places with okay. this, and I don't know. I, I now don't know who to go to. So I'm just stuck waiting for, I don't know who is coming. <laughs> See. It's, I mean, you can't give up. On a program like this, that goes to millions of people watching. Yeah, actually. It, it's, it's, it could be an open door for yeah, you. Yeah, I'm hoping so. If we are talking of giving up, I would have given up a long time ago. Mm. Yeah, but sometimes, as my brother said, you, you wake up and then the kids are in. The women are in, mm -hmm. yeah, ready to go for collection. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do? What do you do? I just say, okay, I think this bin is full. And my brother did mention of those speaking the sachets, they know where the beans are, mm -hmm. our segregation is ongoing. They come there before us, they do, they are picking, they choose what they want from the bean, and then they go. So maybe sometimes what the women who used to sustain their, their, uh, themselves have been taken by the scavengers. Oh. Yeah, so... You're going to have to be talking passion. to me soon about... So, same question, you PPR. I mean... Mm. Do you get any support from government? I will just copy his words. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but development you know, partners. <laughs> development partners. Yes. Okay. So um, currently, uh, we have some funding yes. that we are still waiting to be released. Okay. Um, which it's for PET project actually okay. first phase. Uh, we started already. That's uh, the crushing and bailing. But uh, this funding is supposed to convert it into twine, wine, rope, like you know that kind of thing. That's a trade. Yeah. for polyester because this is polyester material yeah. so it's for the textile industry to weave this beautiful dress you're wearing it's, you know it's made from uh, some of these bottles yes so that 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 is some funding that comes in from development partners and those who are actively involved but not like from government government will just come in uh, be there write some sort of framework for you be there your program and say oh we did a program a minister of this keynote address beautiful well, that's about it. We're going to take a break. And when we return, we are going to take the last statements from these amazing, amazing gentlemen with some amazing, innovative ideas and products, which we'll be showing to you. You're welcome back. I hope you didn't miss our earlier discussions. It's been very exciting in the studio with these gentlemen, these five entrepreneurs with their innovative ideas derived from plastic waste, or what we would have considered waste, but now a material resource, which has helped them to get, um, create employment, to create some amazing products, which are useful, which are contributing to the circular economy in Ghana. We are going to have our final statements. We could go on and on, but I would want to start from Julius. Tell yeah. us what you would want to say about your passion, because that's one thing that I think we've gathered around the table, that we are all very passionate entrepreneurs. 
yeah. tell us something thank you for the opportunity to add my two cents basically i say the sustainability of our planet is a function of how we treat our environment so we as individuals i usually say no matter who you are no matter your complexion no matter how much you take as your salary what you drive i mean no matter who you are when, where you come from we all be equally extinct if we fail to a good to take a good care of the environment yes. COVID has taught us that if we don't take care of the environment the environment will take care of us <laughs> So we basically need to make sure we do what we have to do. We are seeing the harm we are causing, but it's like, okay, I will be gone before we get to the red line. Mm -hmm. That thing is not sustainable. Basically, that's what sustainability is about. So I will urge all those out there, please, we are all involved. The only thing that is not discriminatory is the air we breathe in. Mm -hmm. If we mess it up, it's going to affect both the rich and poor equally. So we need to make sure we take a good care of it. And also young adults who want to go into education in this our institute for environment and sanitation studies we run lots of programs and even short programs you can come we will help you develop projects that are actually feasible and upscalable in the ecosystem so that you can also have something doing so this is just basically what i will add thank you very much julius christopher please tell us something about sessa recycling okay so um thank you um so my final statement what I, I would say is that even though we are in for profit of our business, what, whenever you are going outside or moving out of the house, whatever you are purchasing, take note that if it's not recyclable, don't bring it home. And just let's limit the waste generation we are creating. It's not only about plastics. You go for programs and you, because it's, it's food you are not going to pay for, you take in essence and you're unable to consume all. Let's reduce our consumption rate in terms of whatever material we are consuming within the day in our offices. And another issue also is in um, institutions. I think institutions also play very role. Everybody goes to his or her offices. If we can start the separation or the segregation in our offices, our schools, our religious bodies, it's all going to help us in the recovery process to limit the plastic pollution. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll move to Mr. Quay of UPPR. Please give us your closing statement. UPPR, I mean, I've said quite a bit about it already, so I don't need to go back into it. But what I would say is uh, encourage all of us to recover as much as we can. Let's reuse as many uh, products as we can, and then let's continue recycling because there's still a lot of room, a lot of um, waste out there that needs to be collected, and a lot more can be recycled. So let's all join together. Segregation, getting a, a better environment to live in starts from all of us here. So individually in our homes, in our schools, our churches, wherever we find ourselves, let's gather, let's dispose of waste properly, and it will be a resource for me, for all of us here on this panel. Nel Plast. Nelson. Okay, so what I can add is let us not see plastic to be a problem. Yeah. Because the plastic we see on our street, they never fly from the factory to our street. We carry them out there. And replacing plastic with paper bag or jute bag doesn't solve the problem. The problem is our attitude towards mm -hmm. the disposal of plastic waste. Now, we use plastics as a problem to solve a problem of schools under trees by building affordable homes. Mm -hmm. We also use plastic to solve the problem of unemployment in Ghana and also trees under schools. Mm -hmm. So the, we shouldn't, not that we nail plan, we need the plastic to work, but what we need to change is our mindset on how we dispose of the plastics after use. So that has been the challenge. Thank you very much. Our man, who has made us so laugh. Much. You yeah. admire, he, he yeah. admires you. After the program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, what I want to say is mm -hmm. maybe people watching us have heard us talk about us not getting funding. But that doesn't mean if you have interest in the waste sector, you shouldn't try it. Do it. When I started this, I got to know Nel Plus. I got to meet Christo, Julius. We've met on several occasions. And when we meet... You could see that there's something common between us, fine. And also, it's not just a plastic bottle 
that is on the streets. No. Organic. My brother mentioned of organic. I've been able to turn the organic into soja fly. Yes, through that, I did soja fly, and I was able to feed my chicken with it. And as we speak, I can do black soja fly, which is something that I got to learn, simple because I had passion to take the plastic off the road, off the street. You see, so trying one, I gained two. So maybe the plastic might not work, but the soldier fly might work. So we shouldn't just give up. Thank you very much. On the program today, I have had Julius Jason from University of Ghana. I have had Christopher Jan Sisa Recycling, Mr. Is Ismail Quay from UPPR. We have had Nelson, famous Nelson, Nelson <laughs> Boatin from Nelplast, and Abubakar Isaka. Amazing, amazing gentlemen. Mm -hmm. I am grateful to you for all for being here. Today, we'll, call, we'll pull the curtain down on our program, our second episode on Trash Talk, where we talked about plastics and how we have been able to transform plastics as to whether plastics are actually a waste or useful resource. I think this program has money to prove that and what we can do moving forward from now. I will expect your participation and your viewership for our next episode, episode three, where we bring together people from the policy angle, from implementers, from development partners, from entrepreneurs, from the household level to discuss issues of health, environment, and sanitation. See you next time. <laughs>